another vlog today in my new beast which is a Scania next generation 500 S it used to be S 500 but useful fact that I picked up off another youtuber and to change that because of legal battle with Mercedes about me so with that said welcome to my new truck I'll give you a quick show around this is not the actual official truck slash Proper capital, but we'll have a little look see, so I know you'll probably be itching to see it as much as I was itching to get it. So, uh, with that said, I'll give you a quick tour and then we'll break into a time lapse and see where we go from there. The reason why this ain't going to be a proper tour is because I'm still learning the beast. So, uh, we'll break into it. So, I'll flip you around in a second. Now, sorry about the uh, quick up and around, but I thought I'd do a cut and into this. So now we're looking at the driver's position. It's in the up and west position of the steering wheel. It's a lovely steering wheel, leather bound, lovely thing. You've got all the controls you possibly want on there. The only thing you can't really do or haven't sussed out yet is to answer the phone call. You still have to tap the entertainment system. But on the dash, if I try and bring you in close, I'll, I'll get, give you a better look at it when we do the truck tour. But you know, all the information is there. You got the speed, got on the digital display down here. I've got it on the cruise control set in the main, and you won't probably see them all here. But I have four different sections around my primary. If that makes any sense. So up there, I've got my media. Uh, I Got what I have on top right, but bottom left that's my driving score and obviously fuel distance and add blue percentages. Obviously, we've got a clock, add blue gauge, engine temperature, and fuel. Sorry, we're running at the moment, but we'll be clocking on shortly. I'm not going to give you the full tour of all the buttons though, by the way, we'll leave that for the truck tour. But the entertainment system on this is amazing. This is uh, the truck that I have on here at the moment is one that I've got on my uh, check down in the description down below. I've got the name of the service, but it's basically I subscribe to service and it's all mu you music for YouTube. So if you want to have a quick here, sorry for the audio. I won't go turn it all up, but uh, it might not come across really well on this because you are on my action camera mic at the moment. So, but nevertheless, the audio system is spot on. You got nav, traffic. It's got DAB. It's it's just got everything you you possibly want. And the air con control system right below it, bang on. Don't we have any complaints at this stage? But I've got my work stuff. Falls equipment screen and my living area which that seat there spins around I will even put it in what I call the rest position just there and also what you may have heard me flip over earlier was this table here so let's put this away you lift that up and it goes back in there boom 
looking tidy. Sorry about my bin down below, but as I've just got up this morning, I've made myself some breakfast. I'll give you a quick little look see in the cupboards, give you an idea. So in here is my coffee, tea making and all this. Uh, and each locker's got a light, including... So this is my pantry slash storage locker. In here you got a you got lights all in these lockers here as well. Every locker has a light. Which compared to the DAF is amazing. It's it's just useful. Because in the DAF you open up it'll be dark in some situations. You know, you've got the pantry in there, we've got my cooking area with all the stuff around it. The microwave is really good in this as well. I mean, spot on. Cooked my meal last night, absolutely peeping hot first time, no messing about. That's just my, uh, what I need in day to day's work. All the paperwork and such like in there. We'll take you back down here, there's so much to see. The other thing I love here, it, look, it seems simple, but drawers to put your paperwork staplers you know work work paperwork in there I got I won't open them up for you but yes that is two fridge slash freezers so this one's a fridge obviously at the moment and that one I'm probably going to use as a freezer but I have nothing to put in there so there's no reason to turn it on Um, I won't take you underneath the bed. I'm not going to take you outside at the moment because it's absolutely honking it down out there at the moment, which is going to be fun on the vehicle check. And I mean, the bed's lovely as well. You know, I can't, you know, get over how comfortable the bed is. It does pull out, gets a lot wider than this. It's awesome. And you've got cubby holes like this, and you've got one this end and one that end. Perfect. And these pockets are perfect for your chrome. <laughs> Sorry, this isn't a plug for chrome, but your chrome cleaner bottles just hang in these pockets really nicely, as if it was designed. Then up here on both sides, you've got pockets like that. The lighting, as you can see, is really good in here. And just to make you look above, we've got the sunroof. We've got a sunroof, baby. We've got the net over at the moment, but. Uh, Yes, I did see the open, but it's pitch black out there, so no one's going to be looking through the roof. And yeah, I'll flip you back around. So there we go. Hope you hope you enjoyed that quick little look at the truck. I know it's not a full in-depth look. I would take out and show the front of it, <laughs> but as you may have heard, don't know if you heard or not, it's absolutely honking it down out there, which that would not be much fun. Certainly not for me. <laughs> I'll go out there, do my vehicle check, but I don't want to be out there any longer than I need to be. Because it doesn't sound all that much fun. But I'll put a picture of it, you'll probably be the thumbnail. Hopefully I'll get to show you it sometime today on this vlog. The outside. So, hopefully that wasn't too long-winded. But nevertheless, I'm blown away. This is the best truck. I've ha had to drive, full stop. It's not finished in a different galaxy. It's, I would say, this is the truck to aspire to drive. Irrespective, I know this isn't a V8, it'd be better. I would love it if it was a V8, but still, for an inline six engine, wow. It delivers. That's all I'll say, it delivers. The gearbox in this is you know, I would say it's probably the best on the market. Not maybe not the best in the market. It's probably a bit too, but it certainly is more the most. It's certainly the better one. You know, it's it's a close horse race between Volvo and this now. I mean, I would say maybe this is even better. I wouldn't know without putting side by side to be honest. So we we'll have to see. Um. Yeah. So as you can tell, I'm really excited about this. I've been driving for this about two days now. This is the third day. Going into Saturday the 13th of January, February, March. Yeah, March. <laughs> Keep forgetting. But 
With that said, we are on South West Wales on top of a hill. The reason why we're getting rocked around a little bit in the wind and the storm. Sorry, look, getting distracted by, you know, to be honest, I keep having to pinch myself in this truck. I have to keep going, I'm so privileged to be able to drive this. The boss has decked this out of almost every box tick. There is some things it doesn't have. Well, really, the only thing that comes to mind is the AC unit, the night. It doesn't have. It does have a, a system built into the truck one, though, which isn't a disaster, so that isn't a complaint, by the way. Otherwise, he's pretty much ticked every button of yes, fit that to the truck. But I'll talk more about it later. Also, that you'll probably see this on the time lapse. The headlights on this are amazing. So uh, I'll see you probably because we're going to go from South Wales to uh, Colford to go and load at a drinks factory there. And I think we're going down to Devizes from there. So it's going to be a three hour drive from here. So I'm going to put you on a nice long time lapse. And I'll see you once we've loaded and probably en route to go to Devizes. So I'll see you in a bit.
hope you can see me okay. I think we'll just give you a little bit of a knock up. There we go, I think that's the best location for the moment. Put my sunglasses on and we get wheels rolling. One moment. Yeah, all, all good, all two lights on. Yeah. Some of my new checks I do just to make sure. And we are loaded. Got a full load. Bang on the spot as well, so lucky. 44 ton we are weighing at the moment. So a fair amount. But Please it's what pays turn the bills. Right in 100 yards, then turn left in 60 yards. Should we go? We go. Yeah, we we'll go white at the lights. I think. <laughs> Two ways we could go. We could go towards the M5 and down that way, or we can head down towards the bridges. I don't think we will get over the old Seven Bridge or Seven Bridge, whatever you call it, bridge. Today, I think we'll get over the new one. Now the turn left, reports. then turn right in 80 yards. But this is such a lovely truck to drive. It's an utter dream. That's the now, auto hill right. descent kicking in there. Make sure we clear the island, which we have. And we're all good. We've made our turn. We're going to put it into hill mode because we're going to need it along this route. Please follow the road for 7.8 miles onto Rosemary Lane. We'll just shut that so uh, we don't get so much background noise. The aircon is on, so that's awesome because we like a bit of aircon. Yeah, so I've been flying this truck. It's just amazing. It, as I said earlier, it's just all round blows my mind of how good this truck is. Such a pleasure to drive. It's if I was going to compare it against the car world, it's definitely up there. You know, it's probably going to be in the realms. I wouldn't say maybe not necessarily a Bentley. It was probably a bit far up, but maybe an Aston Martin or a very high-end BMW or Audi, top end you're looking at. In terms of the overall package, you know. And this is just so far, but I don't see it degrading, personally. And I love that this there, you know, in the DAF I would have to put it in auto off. Or not auto off, uh, oh yeah, auto off or or manual auto or whatever it was, or eco off, that was it, eco off or, or just full on manual mode to do that. If I was in normal drive mode then, or in the eco mode on, on there, wouldn't have been done. You can do it in eco mode in this, yes we're on the hill ascent mode in this, so, but equally you can do that in eco mode, you can just change up and down gears when you want in this, which is lovely. And it's so quick as well. check. Now I've got a Tom Tom to the left which I, uh, the only thing I use that really for is obviously it's my PDA but it's good to check the speeds on each road if uh, you're not too certain without having to guess too much. But nevertheless you don't want to fly down these roads too heavily, not fully laden. I love the exhaust brake on this. Oh, hope you can hear that. <laughs> it's a proper exhaust brake on this. I mean, proper exhaust brake. It does the job. It kicks in very quickly.
So I'm just cruising it down here, just keeping the momentum up, just to be green as possible. We don't go too much faster, there's some roadworks up ahead. So I want to just back off a little bit and it's lighted as well. So let's fully back off. Engage a bit of retarder as well. And we're slowing down nicely, fully laden. There, but okay. Anything big to get through, we're fine, but looks like we're all good. So, do we turn left there? We normally turn left up here because it's kind of the way I've been shown to go. Let's see what it looks like there. We might have a bit of adventure. Sorry about this guys, hitting traffic lights as usual. <laughs> so the other side's going to go then, it'll be us. Today we're having a pretty good day, good decent drive across uh, the Brecon Beacons. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed the time lapse there. It's a, such a nice drive, you know, I did stop it while I got to services. Even though I did have breakfast this morning, I was a bit peckish and I needed to use the faci facilities as well. So uh, I thought, it's a good location to get a 15 in and I love it it doesn't hop out of any of the modes that you put the truck into it's it's lovely it doesn't uh, try to outthink the driver at all it doesn't know better it always responds to what you want as the driver this thing it, it's such a nice place to be it is definitely a driver's truck Now nah, we'll go straight on, that's a bit, bit nasty. We'll go for a bit of an adventure. I think we can go this way, just I haven't done it before. It might be all good. It's always nice to try some different modes now and again. So we'll go a bit of an adventure, see how we get on. I'm using the uh, truck nav at the moment, if you know with the uh, audio earlier, it's actually pretty good. Some routes it's more efficient than the TomTom, -tom, but equally the TomTom -tom does get other routes a bit more efficiently done as well, so it's kind of a mixture. So I did, on route to uh, our customer in South West Wales, yesterday actually had both going, and both were, uh, you know, the TomTom -tom had more preferable route, which I took, I know the route anyway, so I would have gone that way even if I didn't have the Tom Tom going. But uh, either right, nevertheless, it's still updated. It's still eventually did go. Yeah, go the route we, the Tom Tom wanted. It should work out to be about half an hour quicker. So it's got to watch it down these roads locals will fly around the bends yeah that reminds me you know early on on the time lapse. I don't know if we got caught on the time lapse or not early on in it had a Warburton's truck come flying around the bend at us you know he wasn't holding no no mercy <laughs> scared the living bejeebus the speed he was doing on those on that type of road insane but hey ho, it is what it is at the end of the day. I'm not a policeman. Nothing came of it. I think he got more cup of or consequences for it. anyway to end up going into the bush a little bit behind me. Not actually into it, but like the side of his truck was like heavily rubbing into the uh, the hedge hedgerow of how much he was having to overcompensate. And that's a good lesson. Why you should never fly down in any form of heavy goods vehicle, even if it's a small rigid down country roads. 
because you, A, you never know what you might meet around the blind bend, B, you do have quite a bit of mass, you know, so, you know, he's very lucky there. He was, I don't think he probably even knows how lucky he was. Maybe he does, maybe, maybe he hopefully has learned his lesson. And this is why I'm a bit cautious in country roads. Not over cautious, I don't think, but uh, I certainly err on the side of caution. We're going to go into 30 imminently. So we'll just back off. Let the truck run down. There we go. Don't even have to use the exhaust brake. Just use gravity to slow us down. And let's actually get to take us off the way mode. Yeah, I have two different main displays. I have a loading display that I set up when, obviously when I'm loading, which monitors the weight of the truck, which is really good actually on this. I'm very impressed. I like everything on this truck almost, pretty much. <laughs> Blown away with. And then, when I'm driving, I have it on the cruise control as my main mic on display because then it uses the radar ahead of the truck to see how fast stuff is going ahead of me, which is awesome on the motorways and just shows really clearly where I have the cruise control on, what I've set it to, how much roll off and roll on I allow it to have, depending on what mode I've got it in. I can all, I can pretty much adjust everything, including uh, how far I sit behind stuff on the cruise, which is cool. Right, commit it now. Just keep it back off. Lovely part of the world yet again. Nice, stunning, sunny day. Sorry for the stutter, stutter. What we'll do, I'll film probably to the end of this road at least, maybe up to uh, Chepstow or whatever the place is called to go up ahead. And then the plan will be, I'll do a time lapse either later in the drive or once I've tipped at the other end, I'll do a time lapse and uh, catch you wherever we make it to. Or actually, no, uh, yeah, yeah, might do it that way. We'll see. Either way, I'll explain what's gone on in the next se after next sequence. Because it's just going to be motorway after this. So well, I don't really want to time that to motorway too much. Because motorway is motorway at the end of the night. I will do some motorway in this for you. And I definitely I'm thinking about doing some videos to be more specific on certain systems on this truck. You know, to talk through what it can do. But I also want some more familiar with it and I can demonstrate it a bit more easily and uh, competently. And I'm going to redo my taco video as well. I should have done one in the DAF on the DAF system, but uh, that's my bad. I do apologise, but if I get hold of the DAF again, even if it's just temporarily have enough time to do, film a video on it, I may do, but I'll see. I can't promise anything on that one. We're doing okay on the driver's score. Pretty much 80 to the field and about 50 in my hill wall which is okay you know getting better at it improving but I'm normally around 80 to 90 in, in the west normally depend what we're doing on what just 
gauge a bit of exhaust brake so we don't roll over 50 down here because otherwise the load will get carried away because as I said we are fully freighted so the load will take it and we'll just stay off the power just let it roll well, up the hill a little bit until we hit 40 and now onto the power just going to keep the power on, power on, power on, power off Just put a bit more power in and run it up the hill. So we'll pipe back off a little bit just before that corner. Backed off. Now we're back on it again. Ooh. Truck tight, yes. <laughs> Another gear. beast up this section but it's, you can tell we're heavy you know we obviously will slow down now it's powering in we're gaining now up to 30 hit about 35 yep there we go we'll power off just gonna lay off the power gonna let it roll a bit Look of exhaust breaking now. Not too short sure up ahead. It's a nice bit of road though. And we just stay on the roll over here. We're doing well. It's all about planning ahead, looking at the road ahead, thinking. I, I just love how the, the Scania, how it functions. It's so intuitive. Just with how you can just do that, and it slows down pretty quick as i say it's almost nearly instantaneous it's delivery of braking performance on the exhaust there's obviously going to be a slight delay but for an exhaust brake next to nothing you know it's spot on and its delivery is it couldn't ask for much more Wow. I don't know if you can see that off to the left, but wow. So, Please turn left in half a mile. Well, the many reasons why I love this job. You get to see some awesome places. I've said this before and I'll say it again. You know, this can be an epic job. And suddenly we get the tunes going as well in the cab. Offers a dike. It's interesting, might you come check this out on the motorbike sometime? I think. So, what's nice about getting slightly different routes now and again from there? See some Please different stuff. Turn left in a quarter of a mile onto Rosemary Lane. And we've got a reduced speed now sign. No, we're not going to take that because it's not left. suitable for us. Yeah, it's a narrow road. We're not taking that. Route recalculation. Please follow the road for three miles on to B4228. So what I'll do, I will catch you shortly. I'll let this run off a little bit so I can turn it off. That's the downside of the Ford camera. Oh. <laughs> yep, that's what you have to watch out for. People would order across the road, don't realise a heavy goods vehicle could be coming down the road. And that's why I'm a big believer in don't, uh, legally speaking, I could do 50 down this road, legally speaking, but responsibly speaking, no, I'm not. No, I'm maximum 40. Now basically between 30 and 40 is good along these types of roads. You can open it up on straights like this of course, but just watch it because people will want to get past you. And if they do, just allow them to, you know, don't fight them. But also be careful like that with a cyclist past there. 
That would be bad if somebody did spot them. I guess it'd be their headache. So it's backing off, backing off. This looks like it's going to be twisty down the hill. I'll leave the exhaust brake on. We're going to engage a bit of actual braking now. Off the exhaust. Uh, let it take us down in a controlled manner. Let's gauge. Aha! You can adjust it. That's awesome. Thought you could. So you can engage your hill descent mode, which you do by tapping on the foot brake like that. It'll hold what speed you're at and you can adjust it on the steering wheel. That is awesome. We're now just going under down the hill in descent mode. And now we'll just increase up to 30. Now we'll just go out of that mode. So what I'll do, I'll catch you in a little bit, because otherwise I'll just mutter on, talk more and more about the truck, and before we know it, we're at two hour mark. <laughs> so I'll catch you shortly. time lapse on the way down. We uh, tipped off in good order and made our way to Magor. We got loaded. We're now at 5.50. So we're going to be probably pushing another 15 hour day today, I reckon. And we're going down to a farm just south of Chipnam. Sort of area actually. Where's my sunglasses? Before we Stop rolling. What have we done with them? Where are they? You hate that when you put something down. Oh, 
Sorry about this, guys. Some mental half a minute. Uh, we're, we're done with them. Oh, we're done with them. The bed. Hmm. Not on the floor. Oh, there they are. Ugh. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Proof that uh, even you can lose stuff in trucks. There we go, we're in gear, let's get going. Auto headlights are on, or oh, auto mode, so it should uh, have been really good so far. I've had no issues with it. I'll tell you what though, which I am a little bit miffed about though, while my fridge has given up the ghost. It's come out with E3 and not working. Now turn left. So it's good I've got two of them. So uh, that's definitely getting reported. But like anything, things can fail. Please take the exit at exit 17 towards A350 in one yeah. mile. Just checking. Merge. Let's get going. So that's all good. Come on, Mr. Car Driver. Cheers. Thank you very much. And we are on eco mode. And we've done all that in eco mode. And we're up to 46. Still climbing. We're coming off at the next junction. Let's get the windshield a bit clean. Yeah. So we got loaded at Maygor. Please take the exit. Clear active exit load though. A bit messy with loading, but uh, we got through it. We have blued up. I polished the tank again, so I'm starting my polishing regime with it. So uh, hopefully the weather keeps up. Don't go through too much rubbish weather. A bit surprised I managed to do that with the weather we've been through today. You won't believe it right now, but been through all sorts today. Now, take the exit. But the truck, as I said, the fridge issue is doing very well. I'm still very impressed with the truck, nevertheless, irrespective of the fridge ish issue. Please take the fourth exit from the roundabout in 200 yards onto A350. Now, take the fourth exit from the roundabout. Want just to let people know what we're up to. Five stars, that's what we like. We like to see five stars, don't we? That's a driver score. People race onto roundabouts as usual. Not that there's a drama, but you know, you're only going to get yourself into danger sooner. Let's slow down. Yeah, so, aside from what I said, not to go on about the fridge too much, aside from the fridge, it's been a good day. So far. So we're going to do a night time delivery. So plan is we're doing a bit of a sequence now, me obviously chatting away. And then I'll probably do a time lapse. And this will probably be an outro as well. We'll just probably do a time lapse some music and end it there as they would say but yeah it's still very early days with the truck as I said earlier it's but it is a different galaxy compared to the DAF at the end of the day I mean please follow the road for 2.4 miles on there's no feasible way the DAF is going to beat the Scania you know this as my colleague says ticks all the boxes. And it does everything, you know, not, not in low order. Everything is well done. There's some teething issues here and there, but nothing of any dramas. And nothing 
from my experience with Scania, that Scania will not be able to resolve in good order. Now, I'll tell you what, the, uh, I think the fuel tank is going to polish up really nicely, even if I dare say so myself. I don't think I'm going to get it out, I'm not the best at polishing, I admit, but I think it's looking like it's going to come up really nice. I, I still need to take the side skirts off and polish down the sides. I do, I know I'm going to be that person who polishes behind something you're not going to see, but my, my theory is why not polish what I can so if somebody ever does that down there, they can go, wow, it's nice and clean down there as well. But it's going to be hard work because of the nature of the job I do. It's, you know, going on to farms isn't necessarily the cleanest thing you could ever go and do. But nevertheless, I'm always up for a challenge. And as I said earlier, I feel really privileged to drive such a truck. It's, it's just an honour. That's all I can say. It's just a pure honour. Yeah, so where we started off on, we just fueled up as well. So I've just put like, uh, just like 200 litres in. Me and my colleague have worked out we probably have about a 600 litre tank. I would have pushed it a bit further, but I thought I'll use the opportunity. Yeah, I'll take some glasses off now. Please take the first exit from the roundabout in half a mile. And we're going to go around the wing road, I think, this time. Early we went through Chippenham. Earlier to get to Devizes. Which is alright, actually, but it's really busy. There's a lot of people, as you may see. You've seen early on time Please lapse. Take the out first and about. Exit from the roundabout Awful lot. I know it's a weekend, and that's probably the one reason. There's a lot of people out and about. As they would say. Now, Not to get political, the by the way, from but, the uh, just saying. And have I told you, I really love the exhaust brake on this. I had not touched the brake at all there, so I was running up that went course was up to speeding round the roundabout, Speedy Gonzales. Uh, touch the brake here, Rotary touch calculation. the brake here. No. We're not going to make it. Good. There we go. We nearly rolled in and out. <laughs> nearly. Nearly did it. Please keep to the left in 100 yards towards Parsonage oh, Way. Something's broken down or something. Please take the fourth exit from the roundabout in 200 yards onto A350. Then take the third exit from the roundabout. Now, take the fourth exit from the roundabout. Just off like that. I love this steering wheel with this as well. It's, if a truck could have a sporty spin, steering wheel, this one has it. Please take the second exit from the roundabout in half a mile, then take the first exit from the roundabout. And the vision out the cab is just spot on for a big truck. It's, you know, really good. And the audio, as I said earlier, the audio system is fantastic in this. Dare I say it, better than a DAF. <laughs> Please Sorry for saying better than that. And um, in a of mile, and for those who like that, there's nothing wrong with the They're okay then trucks, you know, as I've always said, they're okay the trucks. They're not the worst truck in the market, but 
Scania have definitely the set exit from the roundabout. The standard, so as I see what the crazy van driver's up to there. Same thing around what I noticed around Chipnam. I'm sorry if you're from Chipnam, but there tends to be a lot of crazy drivers around Ch Chipnam lately. Please take the first exit from the roundabout in 200 yards onto A420. The engine also stays, it doesn't meant to be crawling up hills. Now Normally, take the first exit from the roundabout. Okay. <laughs> no, we're not taking the first exit off the roundabout. We're going my route. Boss our way on the boys, we'll never get onto this roundabout. If we don't boss our way onto it. Route recalculation. Now turn left. Just keep it in mind. Because people will bully the way in on the Route recalculation. There we go. Just powered on, obviously, as you can hear. Where was I? I just lost my chain of thought then. Uh, yeah, I've completely, it's one of those moments that I've gone completely blank what I was talking about there. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it's, yeah, with DAFs, they're okay, you know, but this Ascania have set the standard for premium. You know, everything feels quality in this, the plastics feel expensive. Stuff like that's metal is metal, you know, the lever is lever, you know, you, you really can't fault it. Your doors shut like an expensive car, you know. The windows are double glazed. So, you know, this is the reason why I'm not saying, you know... You Please take the second exit from the roundabout in half a mile, then and take I think the second exit the from the roundabout. the all-round package is spot on. It's spotty dog. And, you know, I could go on about the Scania all day long. And no doubt for probably quite a few videos up ahead, I will be going on about the Scania. I do apologise as well. <laughs> Because I do love my Scandias at the end of the day, and I do Please try to look beyond my natural bias in a quarter of a mile and be objective about it. As I've said about the fridge, the I'm going to let you know if things break down, you know, and not work. But I have actually very high confidence in Scandia well, take the second being able the to fix back. any issues with this without very little quibble, if any. They are really good. You know, the service I've had off Scandia in the past has been absolutely spot on. So when now, you do have an issue, the they look after from you. The roundabout, then take the second exit from the roundabout. That's good, it's calmed down this roundabout. It was early, I was queuing to get to McDonald's earlier. And I came back through here. Well, that bus coming up, that's where I came out of earlier. That's why I know it was busy around the McDonald's earlier. Route recalculation. Yeah, always keep a good eye out in your mirrors. Route recalculation. For those who aren't truck drivers and listen to this, always keep a really good eye out because people will do crazy stuff around trucks. It's almost like people switch off around trucks sometimes or have a zero clue of what danger there is. And as a driver, certainly we're the ones who have to obviously keep an eye out for them. Yeah, so, nevertheless, I am really loving the Scania. Obviously, as I said, all I can say is thank you very much for Huix to allow me to drive this absolute lovely truck. It's absolute pleasure. I'm lo looking forward to driving for many years to come. I feel as a driver Please very content, very happy in half a mile. 
I'm not saying I wasn't content with the death, but this is like a different realm of content. You know, you, welfare wise, you feel really looked after. Everything works as it should. Because it is stressful when you're driving. If stuff doesn't do what you need it to do, like with the DAF and the steering wheel controls, not doing what it should do and just Please doing really take random the third stuff. Exit from roundabout in a quarter of a mile onto A3. It sounds silly, but it can be an absolute bugbear. Now, so in stage the third five, exit from the roundabout. full exhaust, and it's really raining in the speed. It rains in. I mean, we're doing. Tray 4, Tray 20 now, there we go. Love a bit more one. I was almost saying like that car was doing, it had that sort of momentum that it could just change direction. To be a bit defensive around the roundabout. There we go. And power off the roundabout. So far, on this drive, I've not hopped out of eco mode as well. Please follow In the, the path, for 3.8 I would have been out of eco mode, or its version eco mode, into what is eco off mode, which I call, as I've told you in the past, I call power mode pretty much all the time. Just to win every bit of power that I can get out of that that machine. And it's, I think it's just a mixture of, it's really tame the DAF, it's very eco in terms of it's just doing the minimal as everything gear changes, minimal, you know, power delivery, minimal, you know, even when you need maximum, it it's minimal, if it makes any sense. It's a really good truck for, you know, do trunking work, RDC, curtain side of work, it'll probably live a dream doing as well, but it did do a favour, well, I did have a curtain underneath it. But I think, this, as I said, go back to Scania, the Scania is the best all-rounder, in my opinion. Obviously, views may differ. Free country, as I say, and there's lots of good trucks out there, equally. As, you know, dare I say, I'm not a fan of Mercedes, but I do kind of like Mercedes in some aspects. But, on other aspects, I don't. My next favourite truck would be a Volvo. I do like Volvos at the end of the day. I do have a soft spot for Volvo. Just keep an eye on this Mini. He's going for an overtake. All to gain a few seconds, but nothing wrong necessarily. He probably shouldn't have done it now. It's a bit cheeky on the merger in. And when you can't really see what's going on, and you've got traffic ahead anyway know what you're really going to gain. I'm going to keep a braking distance. I'm going to keep quite far out at the moment because I'm rolling the truck into it, as it would say. So I'm off the power and just rolling in, letting the momentum of the truck drive itself forward. So we're not burning a lot of fuel, less wear and tear on the truck. And just because the gearbox is so good in this, you can do this without any worry that the gearbox is going to suddenly change out of a mode like it would in the DAF. It's it's going to be in the right gear. And if not, at any time, including an eco mode, which you can't do in the DAF, you can change gear yourself straight away. So I'll just hop it down right now, just like that. I'll hop it up. It might not hop up because I uh, don't have any acceleration on. So it does read a lick a bit into you, but it still gears into demand. So there we go. Actually, by hopped up without me realising that, actually. My bad. So I'm going to power into again, just to gain a bit more momentum up. Then we'll power off imminently, just once we've gained a bit more. So I'm not... I'm not Foot flat down power, I'm just putting a little bit of power into it just to drive us forward, then coming off. I, I could do 50, but I'm going to hover around 45 to 40. We're at 42, we're still on the decline, we're going to be entering into 30, so I'm going to engage a bit of exhaust brake just to drag us down. It's all about looking ahead, thinking ahead, and all that. 
and this uh, this is just an intro of a video I'm thinking about doing is talking about advanced level of planning pre thought into driving. By the way, I'm not an instructor. This is the stuff I've learnt, picked up, and works. You know, full stop. It works. It's not probably for everybody, but it's certainly an advanced level that allows you to get the best from Z truck. It's just knowing your machine, what it can do. You know, I'm still learning this machine as well, by the way, but I feel confident enough with its engineering that I can do this without, as I said, any worries of any interference off the machine to how I think it should be going. And this is what I love about Scania, it's a driver's truck. It's a driver in control truck, not trying to outthink the driver, you know, but it is a balance. You can't have a driver who's switched off in the Scania equally, you know. It does have safety systems, it will do certain things, but it's not going to, you know, aid you into things you should be doing. Though. So that's you know, you could make a defence maybe for the DAF in that, for maybe Please a driver who's not quite second exit from the roundabout on it. Half a mile. No offence, men. I'm just throwing ideas out there at the end of the day. So it's powering in again. I know this is going to be probably quite a long video today, and hopefully you're going to enjoy it. We're probably up to around 20 minutes, I wouldn't be surprised. So I'm not going to try and look to see how much uh, film for obvious reasons. Please take and we'll the probably end this imminently. In a quarter so mile with all that said, hopefully you look forward to a video, a proper truck tour of Z truck. Now take but the second with the truck exit tour video. It's very dependent. I want some decent weather to do it in, and uh, obviously adequate time to do it. So I'm not rushing it, not half baking it, as I want to do a proper truck tour, and then I'll do some sub bits on top of that. So more specifically focused on certain systems, maybe on the truck if I can. You know, like the taco, like how the cruise control works in this. You know, please maybe also show you how to turn right things on mile. and off because, uh, as my, me and my colleague were chatting, there was a few things that, without being shown or sussing out yourself, with playing around or spending a lot of time in the manual, might find some of it. But equally, some stuff that isn't very clear, which uh, might be good to have a, a clear intro on to how to do. just as an idea. So with all that said, thank you very much for watching today. It, it is always very much appreciated. And thank you to all my subscribers. I'm very amused that I'm over 160 subs now. I'm very Please impressed with that. Take the second exit from and thank the you very much to everybody, including those who aren't subscribed. Thank you very much for watching the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, please think about pressing that big red button. It doesn't cost you anything. You know, just hit the sub, hit the like button if you like what you see. Now, also, take the uh, second exit from the roundabout. Also, go check out my Instagram, Facebook. I said I'm posting stuff up fairly regularly at the moment, obviously, with the new truck. And I'm going to, uh, as I always keep saying, but I'm getting better actually so far. I'm going to try and release quite a few as I can through the week, just images of my working week. You know, some nice sunsets, some nice pictures of the truck, you know, some interesting locations, you know, all sorts of bits and bobs. And obviously if something happens I feel that, you know, able to put up onto and show you, I will do. So it's a bit like this week I'll release a couple of pictures, or I think one really, just to tease you into this, then release the picture of Z truck. So yeah, again, Go check me out on uh, Instagram and Facebook, and please uh, 
give me a follow Please or the second subscribe on there. That would be very much appreciated. Take the second exit from the roundabout. Okay. <laughs> so yet again, thank you very much for watching. I will catch you next time. Keep safe, everybody. Over and out.